Okay, we're gonna start off with a knees up running. So I don't want this, but I want knees up. And if either your, your knees won't take that or who's ever in the house is going, what are you doing? Why are you shaking the house? Then knees up, marching is fine. And then punches or shadow boxing, whatever works for you. Just keep your hands up and keep your feet moving. And skaters. Knees. Okay, when you do these, keep this knee bent, keep the weight on it. Other side, because if you put your weight onto the back one, then you've got to shift it for each one. This one, you don't have to shift your weight and you're working this quad because you've got it bent the whole time. Okay, next one is squat jumps. When you squat, Keep your weight onto your heels. I actually take my toes off the floor and I do squat and jump. Okay, if your knee's not gonna tolerate that, squat and up, or squat and up onto your toes. And kicks, front side back. Okay, now we're gonna stretch. So I want you to start down here in child's pose. Okay, so when you're in child's pose, you're pushing your butt back as far as it'll go, reaching your hands as far forward as it'll go, and pushing your chest toward the floor. And I want you to come forward, push your hips to the floor, not to your elbows and your ears but lift your shoulders or neck up out of your shoulders and push your hips into the floor. Then dig your toes in and push back here to, you could call this down dog or A-frame. My heels are on the floor. Okay, it's not way up here. Further out, heels are on the floor. Ears, el no, ears are between the elbows and I'm pushing my chest back towards my knees. And then I want you to have a seat. Pull one foot across, or I've got one foot straight out. I pull the other one across. If you can tuck this foot and still keep both butt cheeks on the floor, do that. I can't. If I do that, one side comes up. Whichever knee is up, the opposite elbow comes outside the knee, and you push across. Other side. And pull your feet in. Put the bottoms of your feet together. Okay. Do not grab your toes like this. The goal here is to be to grab your ankles and keep your back straight. Okay. That shouldn't be rounded here. It should be up flat. 
and then push your knees down. I actually find I get a better stretch if I put my hands here and tuck my elbows against my back. It's like I'm pushing myself across the slippery floor right now. So that I keep my back straight and just push my elbows, my knees down. Okay, then feet out. <clears throat> Over to one side. Okay, so what I'm doing when I come one side is I grab my toe and I'm lifting this arm all the way over the top. So I'm bringing my ribs down towards my thigh. My toes stay up, they don't roll in. Then I turn towards that foot, lift my chin, and pull my chest down toward the leg. Same thing on the other side, grab your toes, reach over. And then up, turn your chest towards your foot. Again, make sure your toes are up and not rolled in and pull your chest down. Chin up, toes up, reach your elbows toward the floor. Pull your feet in, reach out. Ideally, you would grab your toe. Okay, I don't want this. Chin up, back flat, grab your toes, pull your heels off the floor. If you can't do that, if you can't reach your toes, sit up, pull your toes back as far as they'll go. And with your back flat, not here, chest pushed forward, hinge forward from your hips. And then pull your feet in. I'm in a squat here, heels are on the floor. My elbows are inside my knees, I push my knees open. Put your hands down, straighten out your legs, walk your feet together. And up. Okay, so <clears throat> when we did the warm up, you guys, if you only did it once with me, I want you to go back now that you've stretched. And I want you to do two times more through, 30 seconds each. Knees up running, hunches, skaters, knees, squat jumps, and kicks. Okay, and then we're going to go on to some conditioning moves. I'm going to show you three different conditioning moves, break them down for you. Um, and then I want you to do each one of them for a minute. Okay, so the first one, <clears throat> I'm going to start here. Feet are on the floor, my hands are behind me. If you can push your palms down, that's good. My elbow, my wrists don't bend that well. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to rock. Bring my hands closer, rock some more. Then I am going to pull up to my squat and come up and all the way back down and back to here and rock. So this part is for flexibility. If you need, if you're finding that this is easy, when you come forward, push your knees down. You'll feel the stretch here in your hip flexors and your Achilles. Okay, then I'm going to push up to my squat and up and down. Okay, so this part is flexibility, and this part is strength. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one, I'm gonna do a push-up. I'll show you this from a couple of different angles. I'm gonna do a push-up, and then come to a spider lunge, which means I bring my foot up to the side of my hand, and reach up and down. I bring it back, push up, foot up, spider lunge. Okay, so from the side, it's push up, foot comes up, reach. Push up, that's the strength part, and this is the flexibility part. Okay, so that's two. The third one is, um, it's a variation on a bicycle. You guys have all done bicycles before. So when you do a bicycle normally, I don't want you to grab your head here. You just take your fingers and you cup them around your ears. And normally, you, bend, you pull your knee in bent and you come across. What I want you to do here is I want you to do them with straight legs. So I'm coming across. My elbow comes to the opposite knee, but I'm also doing flutter kicks at the same time. Okay, so three exercises. Um, the rocking to deep squat and up and down, push up to the spider lunge and reach, 
and straight leg bicycles, one minute each. Okay, this month we are talking about getting power. This week, last week we talked about power through rotation. This week we're talking about power through backup mass. So pushing your weight into whatever you're hitting. Okay, so we're gonna start with the front kick. And when you do a front kick, you don't wanna kick high. Well, you might wanna kick high, but that's way less useful. What you really want to do is push your weight forward into someone. So you're pushing forward from your hips. All the pieces of power, um, rotation, backup mass, anchoring, they're tied together. But rotation and backup mass are particularly tied together because when you do your front kick, your hips rotate, but they rotate so that you can push your weight forward. Um, so if you look at this, it looks like I'm leaning back, but I'm really not leaning back. My head is still over my feet. It's my hips that are going forward. So the bulk of my weight, my mass, is from here to here, so that's pushing into my kick. So I want you to set yourself up in front of a mirror or set your camera on video so that you can see yourself do this. And we're going to do 10 front kicks on each side. One, and watch your hips. Two, three, make sure they're pushing forward. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then on the other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then I want you to get a chair um, or a target. I suppose it doesn't have to be a chair. Chair just makes sense to my brain because it's here. And I want you to set the chair far enough so if you just pick your foot up and extend, you don't quite reach the chair. So then I want you to do five front kicks here where you have to push your weight forward. So if I just stand here like this and bring my foot up, it doesn't reach the chair. So I want you to have to push your hips forward. One, two, so that you reach the chair. Three, four, five, and then the other foot. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then you can put your chair away. And I want you to fall back in your fighting stance. So, feet are here. I'm right handed, so I take my right foot back. If you're left handed, take your left foot back. They're no more than shoulder width apart. And this one comes back so that the toe of the back foot is about lined up with the heel of the front foot. Take your back heel off the floor. Take the weight off your front heel so that your weight is shifted forward a little bit from your hips, but not your head. Okay, then we're going to do jab cross. And what we're going to do, we talked, we talked about rotating here. Okay, but what you're going to do, you're going to rotate, and then one little last push. Rotate, and one last push. Okay, so one, two, three four, five. Okay, so then what I want you to do is I want you to get a partner. And you're not gonna have them use pads for this. You're gonna have them hold their hands up. So you're gonna face your partner. Your left hand, if you're right-handed, you go left hand first, then right hand. If you're right, left-handed, you go the other way. You want your dumb hand first, then your smart hand. And your partner's gonna hold the targets up. And you are going to rotate part way Put your hand on there. So my left hand across to my partner's left hand, and then push. Across and push. Across and push. Across and push. And I don't want you doing this fast. I want you coming nice and slow, partway through your rotation, touch their hand, and then push the rest of the way. Partway through the rotation, touch their hand, and push the rest of the way. That way you can feel you've got your rotation here, which we had last week, and you finish it off by dropping your weight into that. Um, if we were doing something with a descending, you'd be dropping your weight that way, but because we're pushing, you're push because it's high, you're pushing your weight in. So I want you to do 10 sets of jab cross like that with your partner. Okay, your review forms this cycle, 
um, for advanced karate kids or action karate form two from the beginner's curriculum and action karate form five from the green belt curriculum, which we're going to do the second half of. Each one of those forms, I want you to think on each move where you are using backup mass. Rotation two, that was last week's thought, particularly backup mass for this week, which is this week's thought about generating power. So we start here, action karate form two, and you fall back in your guard stance. So when I do this punch, I'm going to shift my weight forward a little bit, push off that back foot so that my weight is leaning into the punch. Second punch, I step through and I drop my weight and settle on the punch. The descending back fist, it's really obvious where your backup mass is. You chamber here, you step behind, and you drop your weight as you into the bridge of their nose and break it. Spin, back fist, and I settle my weight as I punch. And this, the last one, as you kneel and punch, it's really obvious where your backup mass is. It's dropping. Step back, you're blocking. Settle your weight into the stance. Step back, settle your weight into the stance. Now you're elbowing somebody behind you. Drop your weight and elbow. When you do these strikes, you drop, you're not going, but you're gonna just set your weight a little bit on each strike. So you've got the backup mass there. Okay, and then last month we reviewed the first half of Action Karate Form 5. This month we're reviewing the second half. So we finished last month here on your knee. Turn, rotate. Um, we're going to do a back leg roundhouse kick. This one really is all about rotation. Rotate foot, rotate your hips on the kick. Slide up double side kick. So the side kick's toward there. When you throw your side kick, your hip push in your round your hook kick your hip pushing in is where your backup mass comes from so side kick side kick slide up hook kick then i'm going to turn i rotate and i push my weight through my hips forward into the punch there's my backup mass i'm going to rotate and push my weight forward into my hips backup mass like that one's not a needle hands up step front kick. It's just like the front kick we practiced earlier. Your hips are pushing in. Pump, front kick, hips are pushing in. Grab the person's head. Drop your weight as you elbow. And set. So what I'd like you to do is I would like you to do action karate form two. One more time, just like we did. But you say out loud where the um, backup mask comes from without me doing it with you. And the same thing with the second half of Action Karate Form 5. Okay, so uh, Advanced Karate Kids in Tungsten of White Belt. You guys are all doing basic Form 1. We're going to do the whole form. I'm going to talk as we go. So we start here. First move is a block. It's got four parts. Look, chamber, step, block. Two, step and punch. Back in the other direction. Look where you're going first. Look. Chamber, step, block, step and punch. Coming towards the front, look, chamber, step, block. Then three times, step and punch. Your target is here, solar plexus. One, two, three. Okay, three quarter turn. We've practiced this in a bunch of the other videos. You always start with your right foot forward, you always move your left foot, and you always turn counterclockwise. So I'm gonna look, chamber, Step, block, step and punch. Other way, look, chamber, step, block, step and punch. Towards the back, look, chamber, step, block. Three times, step and punch. Three quarter turn, right foot's forward, left foot moves, you turn counterclockwise. Look, chamber, Step, block, second punch, and then back the other way. Look, chamber, step, block, second punch. So your counts go two, two, four, three quarter turn, two, two, four, three quarter turn, two, two. Okay, and the only way to get this is to do it. 
over and over and over and over. Set the video up if you need to, um, videotape yourself doing it. Uh, we call it basic form one, not because basic is easy, but basis that everything else you're gonna learn in tongue Studio is based on this. Um, all of your beginner forms and many of the advanced forms, even the form that the black belts are doing this cycle, all work on that same eye pattern on the floor. Okay, two self-defense, two review self-defense for you guys today. First one is from the beginner curriculum. Somebody does two hands show up to the front. Hands are up, I don't want any trouble. Okay, we're gonna use backup masks for this. My hands are gonna come up outside of theirs, and then I'm going to drop my weight. My elbows are aiming for this soft part on the inside of their arm. So I don't want any trouble. Hands come up, drop my weight, then I'm gonna push my weight forward, hit at the top of the pack, punch if I can reach, kick, cover out. Now the spot that you're hitting at the top of the pack, find these bones. You have bones here, they're called uh, clavicles, collarbones, um, right underneath those. The muscle right underneath that is the, t it's the very top of your pack. Okay, so you're gonna hit it with your palm heel. You're not going push, you're going pop. So it's in and out. So we start here. I don't want any trouble. Step back as your hands come up. Back up mass, drop, breaks the choke. Back up mass that was pulling your weight down. Now you're gonna push your weight forward, hit top of the pec, kick, cover up. Okay, the next one that we're gonna do is it's scissors, and everybody loves scissors. They think scissors is cool. But honestly, if you do the first part of self-defense right, you don't need to do the scissors part. The goal is to never get down on the floor with someone who attacks you. Okay, somebody's throwing a punch at your head. What do you need to do? You need to get out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna get out of the way and I'm gonna block. This is a block, it's force to force. This is a parry. The next move is a parry. It comes up, the back of my hand slides down their arm and then grabs this side of their hand. Then I am going to throw a roundhouse kick to their stomach. I am going to throw another roundhouse kick and this one when I land I'm going to tuck it behind their ankle. Then I'm going to let go because if I kneel down and I'm still hanging on they're just going to pull and I'm going to be off balance. I'm going to let go. My right knee is on the floor. I put my hands down and I do a hook kick to their stomach and then I cover up. Okay, so hands are up. So I'll do it this way. Someone throws a punch at your head. Get your head out of the way. Block, parry, grab. Round house kick to the, to the solar plexus, to the ribs, to the face, whatever you reach. Another round house kick. This one lands hooked behind their ankle. That's the right foot. Drop that knee, right knee on the floor, hands on the floor, hook kick. Cover up. If you can find somebody in your house to practice those on, that's ideal because I want you to see with the first one that your elbows are hitting the inside of the arm. I want you to, to feel where the block parry is on the second one. And the other thing that tends to happen is people get here and they throw their hook kick down here. The hook kick should not be knee height. It should be to, be to the hips of the person that you're trying to take down. So I want you to practice those a bunch of times, ideally with a partner. Okay, chucks. We're going to start with a single one. We're going to do, some people call these inverted figure eights. I call them helicopters. Um, in my mind, this is a figure eight and this is an inverted figure eight going the other way. So this is an up and down sort of figure eight. So like I said, I call it a helicopter. So you're gonna start here. Always hold the chuck as close to the string as you can. I got my thumb down. I am, to my right hand right now, it's going counterclockwise. If it was in my left hand, it would be going clockwise, but in both cases, it's going from the outside to the inside. So you're going in, 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 in. Okay, then you're gonna carefully, so you don't hit the ceiling fan, bring it up and up, you're going in the other direction. So if it's in my right hand, it goes in on the down and out on the up. And it, it, you, it seems silly, but when you switch them, it actually switches very nicely. So in, out, in, out. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. Then it's eventually the goal is one and one, but it's in, out, in, out, in, out. And if you need to think about it, go slow. The chunks will go. 
Okay, then put it in your dumb hand. In and out. In and out. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, and then ones. And if you're like me, you're gonna find my right hand does this easily without a problem. When I'm doing both hands together, the left hand follows along with the right hand pretty nicely. The left hand by itself is really stupid. Okay, so once you have that, it's your other chuck. Okay, so beginners, you're only required to do the first part. The rest of you guys, two. So when you're doing two at the bottom, they're coming towards each other. They're both going in, in, in. So they're, they're not going like this. This one's coming in and this one's coming in as if they're coming towards each other. I can't think about my left one or it doesn't work. And then when they're up, they're both going out. So this one's going out, that one's going out. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, one, two. One, 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 one. Okay, the best way to catch this, um, some people will just from here catch. I find that doesn't, it, easier if I add a bump to my shoulder and even easier if I hit the shoulder and let it wait one full circle. Okay, I, I, can, I can show you, hits here, makes a full circle and then I catch. The circle lets me get my hand, if I can, you can do it this way, but I find circling over the top of my hand gives me more time to catch. I mean, like I said, my left hand is really stupid. I'm not sure if it even will do it by itself without the other one. So if you're doing these here, hit, I'm hitting here because when I have two, I can't hit my shoulders. So I'm gonna come here, ribs and out. Okay, I want you to practice that. Um, practicing in front of the mirror would be really good unless you let go of them and break the mirror. Practice setting your phone up and videotaping yourself sometimes could be good. Or if you're outside and there's a, a window or something that's you're not in danger of throwing your weapons through, that you can see your reflection of yourself in, that's a good place to practice too. Okay, um, if you are doing comma set, this, so Red Belt Kids and Tung Sudo, second and third brown belts and all the red belts and the apprentices we're doing comma set so this month is the action karate form five part we did the first part last month we're going to do the second half of it this month next i mean next week last week we did the first half of ak5 this week we're going to do the second half of ak5 next week we'll put it all together okay so last week we finished here down on your knee so you're gonna turn, come up, turn to the back. Back leg round house kick. Make sure you rotate your foot, round house kick. Slide up, side kick, side kick. Slide up, hook kick. Okay, then we're gonna to turn to that corner. Um, Commas chamber here. Chop, under, chop, punch. I'll break that down for you in a minute. Other side, chop, under, chop, punch. Step with your left foot towards the corner. Right foot does a front kick. Then you do a pump front kick. Step to Basai Chasi. Left foot steps behind and cut across. Then you're going to step out. Right foot comes back and you're here. You broke a choke. <clears throat> okay, this chop under chop cut. What I'm doing, you've done chop punch. Chop punch. This goes chop comes under, this one pulls back, chop again, and punch. If you look at my hips, I have a ton of rotation when I do this. I'm rotating away, in, away, in. So chop, under, chop, punch. And if you take class, if your kids take um, pro tech or if you take class with the teens, you can hear a lot of voices saying chop, under, chop, punch. Chop, under, chop, punch. Because we've practiced it like that next May a hundred times. Okay, so I'll do it once in the other direction for you. We finished here. Up, turn, back leg round toes kick, slide up, double side kick, slide up, hook kick. Turn to the corner, chop, under, chop, punch, to the left, then to the right, chop, under, chop, punch. Step with your left foot, 
right front kick, pump, right front kick again, Vasai Chasi, step out, and break the choke. And that's the end. Next week we'll review, we'll go back over the whole form.